Hello dear students, welcome back to online English classes. In this session, I am going to deal with the topic word order or rearranging of words in order to make meaningful sentences from your workbook. We also call it jumbled words or jumbled segments. First, let us understand what is this jumbled words or jumbled segments. If you describe things or ideas as jumbled, you mean that they are mixed up and they are not in an order. Solving jumbled words or jumbled segments means to put words in an order or to rearrange words in an order according to the rules of sentence formation to make meaningful sentences. This is very very important topic because many of you have a number of words but you don't know how to put them in order and make meaningful sentences. It is because our native language often influences the way we speak English and hence many errors creep in. So I hope this session will definitely help you in formulating correct English sentences. So before we begin to talk about rearranging jumbled words or jumbled segments to make meaningful sentences, let us understand the basic sentence structure in English. The order of words in English sentences is very important. A change in word order often results in a change of meaning and it often leads to confusion. Many other languages use inflections, a change in the form of words to show how the parts of a sentence function. English has very few inflections, so the place that a word occupies in a sentence is very important. All right. So let us see the basic sentence structure in English and most of the sentences in English follow this basic sentence structure that is subject plus verb plus object. So this is the basic sentence structure in English. When I say subject, verb and object we have already discussed about these terms in our previous sessions when we were discussing about subject verb agreement. Let us not go in detail with the definition of these terms. The subject part represents what is talked about or written about. The verb denotes action or a state of being and the object is the one which receives the action done by the subject. Now let us see a few sentences to understand this sentence structure. In the sentence, the dog killed a cat. Here in the sentence, the word dog is the subject, killed is the verb and a cat is the object. In the next sentence, the child watched the rabbit. Here in the sentence, the child is the subject, watched is the verb and the rabbit is the object which receives the action done by the subject, the child. So one more important point to remember is that the subject can be a noun or a pronoun. Similarly, the object can also be a noun or a pronoun. Similarly, in the next sentence, she speaks English. In this sentence, she is the subject, speaks is the verb and English is the object. To make sentences in English, you need at least two important things. To, you need at least two important elements. You need a subject and a verb. Yes, dear students, with subject and a verb, you can make a sentence in English. For example, 
you can have a simple sentence as birds fly. So here in the sentence birds is the subject and fly is the verb. When I say birds fly the word order is subject plus verb. But in many situations the verb by itself may not tell us everything. It requires or it, it needs an object to complete the meaning of a sentence. For example, if I say Ram eats. If I say Ram eats, then the sentence would be incomplete. It requires an object to complete the meaning of the sentence because the question arises Ram eats what? So in order to complete the meaning of the sentence I can say Ram eats an apple. So in order to complete the meaning of the sentence I can say Ram eats an apple. So in that case the word Ram is the subject, eats is the verb and apple becomes the object. Similarly, in the next sentence, if I say Dhoni plays, again the sentence would be incomplete. So it requires an object to complete the meaning of this sentence. So in order to complete the meaning of this sentence, I can say Dhoni plays cricket. So in that case, the word cricket becomes the object and the word dhoni becomes the subject and place becomes the verb. So remember, in order to identify the object in a sentence, you ask the question, who or what after the verb? The answer will be the object. Let us try this with this sentence. Dhoni plays who? No answer. Dhoni plays what? He plays cricket. So in that case the word cricket becomes the object. Now the problem is in many Indian languages like Kannada, Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, the word order is subject plus object plus verb. So, if you translate the same sentence in Hindi, in Hindi we would say Dhoni cricket khelta hai. So, you can see the verb comes in the end. Similarly, in Kannada we would say Dhoni cricket adutane. So again, you can see the verb comes in the end. But in English, it's not like that. The verb comes in the middle between the subject and the object. So, that is why when you mentally translate your native language into English, you often find that there are many errors in your English sentences because the word order is different in English. So take a note of it. In English, it is always subject plus verb plus object. Okay, the next important thing we need to remember is that in English, the verb and the object usually go together. We should not separate or we should not split the verb and object in a sentence. For example, in the sentence, Shilpa eats an orange every day. In this sentence, Shilpa is the subject each is the verb and orange is the object and the word every day is the time expression and it's an additional word. So the word every day is the time expression of the sentence. But instead if I say an orange Shilpa eats every day, the sentence would be incorrect because the word order is itself wrong and the verb and the object are separated. So in English, the verb and the object always go together. 
Another important thing we need to remember is that when you have a place and a time in a sentence, in English, the place is usually mentioned before the time. For example, I go to the super market every Sunday. In the next sentence, he arrived at our house an hour ago. Similarly, in the next sentence, we left home at 8 o'clock. And in the next sentence, I went to London last year. So the first sentence is, I go to the supermarket every Sunday. So in the first sentence, I go to the supermarket every Sunday. The second sentence is, he arrived at our house an hour ago. Third sentence, we left home at 8 o'clock. And in the fourth sentence, I went to London last year. So notice that in all these sentences, the place is mentioned before the time. <clears throat> okay, the next important thing we need to remember is that when you have adverb of frequency in a sentence, such as never, always, sometimes, often, rarely, etc., they usually go before the verb. For example, Mithun often goes for shopping. Here in this sentence you can see the adverb of frequency often is placed before the verb goes. However, with verb be, they are am, is, are, was and were, they go after the verb. For example, she is rarely late. Here you can see the verb be, that is is, is placed before the adverb of frequency rarely. And here the verb be, that is is, is used as the main verb. Now, if you see your workbook, you have three different types of questions in word order. They are rearranging of words to make affirmative sentences, rearranging of words to make negative sentences, and we will also learn how to place the time expression at the end of each sentences. And at the end you have rearranging of words or rearranging of segments to form questions. Now, let us understand one by one. Now, first we will understand how to rearrange jumbled words or jumbled segments to form affirmative sentences. Before that, it is very important to understand what declarative sentences are. Declarative sentences are used to make statements. A statement is usually the expression of a fact or of an opinion. A statement can be positive or negative. Declarative sentences are further divided into two types. They are affirmative sentences and negative sentences. Affirmative sentences are the sentences that have positive meaning. And negative sentences are the opposites of affirmative sentences which have negative meaning. Now let us understand the word order in positive sentences. The word order in affirmative sentences follows number of different patterns. The first pattern is subject plus verb plus object. So this is the basic one. For example, 
I like you. So here I is the subject, like is the verb and you is the object. Affirmative sentences can also be formed with subject plus verb plus adverbial. For example, she swims quickly. So here in the sentence, she is the subject, swims is the verb and quickly is the adverbial. Similarly, affirmative sentences can also be formed with subject plus verb plus now, for example, they are the teachers. They are the teachers. She lost the money. As I already told you, the subject can also be a noun or a pronoun. So here, she is the subject lost is the verb and the money is the noun. Another common pattern is subject plus verb plus adjective. For example, so let me give you one more example to this sentence structure. The weather is Cold. So here you can see the sentence structure is subject plus verb plus adjective. Here in these two sentences the adjectives are happy and cold. Affirmative sentences can also be formed with subject plus verb plus continuous verb that means the ing form of the verb. For example, Radha was cooking. Another example to this sentence structure is she is running. So here in these two sentences you can see the continuous form of the verb Cooking and running are placed at the end. So the sentence structure is subject plus verb plus continuous verb. So the next important thing we need to remember is that we have modal verbs in English such as shall, will, should, would, can, could, may, might and must. So when we use modal verbs we form sentences in different ways. So the word order is subject plus model plus verb. For example, I will see you tomorrow. So one more example. You should go to the doctor. Similarly, in the next sentence, you can call me. You can call me tonight. So notice that in all these sentences, the modal verbs will, should, and can are placed before the main verbs see, go and call. So when we use modal verbs, we form sentences in different ways. So the word order here is subject plus model plus verb. So the next important thing we need to remember is that when we have two objects in a sentence, they are the direct and indirect objects in a sentence. We form sentences in different ways. For example, if I say, 
For example, if I say, I gave the chocolate. Here in this sentence, I is the subject, gave is the verb, and the chocolate is the object. But instead, if I say, I gave Lucy the chocolate. In that case, the word I is the subject and gave is the verb and Lucy becomes the indirect object and Lucy becomes the indirect object because she is the one who received the direct object that is the chocolate. Similarly in the next sentence I through John the ball. Here in the sentence again you can see I is the subject, through is the verb and John becomes the indirect object because he is the one who receives the direct object the ball. So here John is the indirect object and the ball is the direct object. So let me give you one more example to this. If I say I gave him a pen. In this sentence again I is the subject, gave is the verb and him is the indirect object because he is the one who received the direct object that is a pen. So here him is the indirect object and a pen is the direct object. So when you have two objects in a sentence, the direct and indirect objects along with the place and time in a sentence, the sentence structure would be like subject plus verb plus indirect object plus direct object plus place and time. So this is the sentence structure. Let me give you one more example to understand this sentence structure. I will tell you a story at school tomorrow. I will tell you a story at school tomorrow. So here I is the subject, will tell is the verb. Here you should observe that the main verb tell is preceded by the model auxiliary verb will and you is the indirect object because he or she is the one who will receive the direct object that is a story and you can see the place and time expression at the end of the sentence. Now let us do some exercises from the workbook page number 17 first main you have 10 questions you have to rearrange the jumbled words or phrases to make affirmative sentences. Let's take a few questions and solve them. So here I have written four sentences. So here you can see the words are mixed up, the, the words are jumbled in each sentences. So what you have to do is you have to rearrange these jumbled words to make affirmative sentences, to make meaningful affirmative sentences. For example, in the first question you see you have the words French I speak. So I have written the word, basic word order here subject plus verb plus object. So you can make use of it. Here you have three words French I speak. So the subject is I. Then comes the verb speak and then comes the object French. So don't forget to put full stop after you complete the sentence. 
Similarly, in the second question, you have three words again. Cell flowers V. So the subject here is V. The first letter should be capital V. Then verb cell. Then object flowers. And put full stop. In the third question, you have sister has my got a dog. So let us find out the subject here. Here you have the word my. My sister is the complete subject here. My sister. Then comes the verb. Here you have the verb has. My sister has got. You should observe here. Here the main verb got preceded by the primary auxiliary verb has. So you have two verbs here. One is primary auxiliary verb and the other one is the main verb. So usually the primary auxiliary verb is followed by the main verb. So has got then comes the object then comes the object a dog and put full stop. So when you read the sentence my sister has got a dog. Similarly in the next sentence you have so many words here uh, which are jumbled. You have words like must the book read you and you have one model verb here so please notice. So uh, let us put the subject here you followed by the model verb must read the book. Here you is the subject must read is the verb. So here you should observe that the main verb read is preceded by the model verb must and at the end you have the object the book. All right students I'll conclude my session here and in the next session we will continue with the two types of exercises they are how to rearrange words to make negative sentences and there we will learn how to place the time expression at the end of each sentences and we will also learn how to rearrange segments or phrases to form questions. So I'll conclude my session here. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.